new tutorial for Emily Soto's Fashion Actions. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Fashion Skin Action, which is used for the professional retouching and the flawless skin on all of your photos. Here I have a photo taken by Emily Soto, broken into two windows. One of the windows we have zoomed in on the face so we can see the detail of this action as we work. We'll begin by running the action, and this Fashion Skin Action gives you the options of different lengths for the portrait that you've taken. I'll begin with the semi-portrait option. Once the action is finished running, you can open up the folder called Skin Edits, and this will show you the different layers that we can work with. We're going to begin with the skin smoothing layer with this black layer mask over top. So all we need to do is select our paintbrush tool, make sure we have the white paint selected, and we're going to begin painting over her skin, wherever the blemishes are on her face, and anything that we want to smooth out. Now this is just meant to be a light base to cover up these fine lines and wrinkles. you notice there are still some of the larger frequencies left behind on the skin, but this is just giving us a great place to start as we begin retouching this photo. Now as you paint, you want to make sure that you don't paint over her eyes or her lips or anything that you want to keep the contrast and that sharp detail of as we work on this image. This is just to get rid of anything that's bothersome or the, the blemishes on her face. There we go, very easy. You can already see how this layer has affected our photo by switching it on and off, and it's already begun to smooth our photo out. So now we can just right click to merge this layer down, and now we'll be working on the color layer. For this color layer, you also want to select a paintbrush tool. We want to hold it down and come all the way to the bottom so you select the mixer brush tool. Now this tool does have a couple of different options at the top. We want to make sure that just this function to the right is selected down, that we can keep this area transparent. And as we come over to the mix and the flow of this, I like to keep it at a lower opacity. That way it doesn't affect the changes on our photo too dramatically as we're working, and it just blends it very naturally to give us a beautiful skin tone. So you want to begin in the center near where the highlights are. And this, this brush essentially is just pushing those highlights out to blend in the way that a, a real makeup brush would. The best way to do it is to work into little swirls or circles on your photo. That way it really blends it in and it doesn't make anything too, too dramatic as we work on it. There we go. You just want to work it from the center all the way out to the edges so that we have that nice blended tone all across the skin. And it's great because you can see the differences this is making on the face up close in this window. But also as you look over to the one from the distance, you can always tell where there's a little bit of a muddied spot or a, a darker area that you want to make sure that you blend out that you maybe wouldn't have noticed when it was up close. There we go, great. And you want to work all the way down here on the face and anywhere there's a dark area or maybe these darker circles on her eyes or maybe the shadow over here by her nose. Anything that you want to blend out and to smooth up a little bit, you can just use by doing it in little circles all over her face like this. Now this is a new technique that Emily showed me and I'm so glad that she did. This saved me so much time in editing my photos. It will save you a lot of time from the old fashioned way of using the paintbrush. There we go, beautiful. Now you'll notice that this area right here between her eyes is still a little bit dark. You could try to blend that with this tool, but I'll show you a quick way to do it otherwise. So I just have my dodge tool over here. Whenever I'm working with skin tones in the dodge tool, I like to make sure that my opacity exposure is set very low, that way it doesn't affect it too much. You can just start by clicking and dragging until it's all about the same, same highlight in there. If you feel like you've gotten too much, you can just back it up a little bit and try again. Beautiful. And maybe when we want to add a little bit of a highlight over here on her forehead to give a little bit more of that depth and dimension so that matches that highlight on her nose. And there we go. Now we're not quite finished yet, we still have our detail layer, which is something that you can do by using a couple of different tools here. We'll go ahead and zoom in on this face just a little bit so that we can really take a look at these fine lines and wrinkles that we want to get rid of. There we go. I'll start with the patch tool, which is your first option. And all you have to do with this one is just encircle that fine line or wrinkle that you are wanting to get rid of and drag it over to the clear skin and let it do its work. There we go, it's already all blended for you. Another option is by using your spot healing brush tool, which is just above that tool. And for this one, same thing, except you're drawing right on top of that line. And there we go, it's already magically blended away. So there's a fashion skin 
action run on this photo, you can see how simple and easy it is to use. We'll go ahead and take a look at the original and we can see how it affected our photo, giving us that beautiful flawless skin that we all love. And it was so easy to do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you keep using those fashion actions.